Good morning, everyone. This is PA and the AM coming to you from Carlsbad, California. And today I'm going to be talking about hearing loss. So I just returned from our American Academy of Olaryngology conference from New Orleans. And so I just want to share with you a little bit of tidbits of things that I learned and apply to my practice. So hearing loss is one of the most common neurological birth defects in the United States, and it happens in two out of every thousand births. And hearing is important for speech and communication, safety, whether or not if you're crossing the street to know what direction the sound is coming from. And it can be caused by infection, such as meningitis in kids. It could be caused from a noise-induced hearing loss, whether someone's not wearing hearing protection around loud noises, from genetics, um, from ear trauma, whether someone grabs a Q-tip and pushes it deep into the ear and traumatizes the eardrum, from uh, earwax in the ear canal, and ear infections or chronic fluid in the ears. So how sound travels, if you see in this image, sound goes from the pinna or the external ear to the external auditory canal, to the eardrum or the tympanic membrane, to the ear bones, also called the ossicles, and it vibrates against the cochlea, to our hearing nerve, and up to our brain, and that's how we perceive hearing. So if there's an abnormality in this cycle, then we um, want to determine the type of hearing loss. And there are different types of hearing tests that could be done, and one that could be done in the office with an ENT provider is with tuning forks, or in an audiologist's office with something called an audiogram, or a Bayer in children or young kids. Um, there are two different types of hearing loss. The first type of hearing loss is called sensory neural hearing loss, meaning there's an abnormality and somewhere between the cochlea or the nerve or the connection between the nerve and the brain. And there is conductive hearing loss, meaning there's an abnormality in the middle part of the ear. So the treatment for hearing loss is if there's a significant sensory neural hearing loss, could be with hearing aids, and the audiologist would be able to determine that when you get the hearing test. And if there's chronic fluid in the middle ears, there could be tubes that are placed in the eardrums to drain out that fluid. Check out my YouTube video I previously discussed on ear infections and I go into more detail about what that entails. And if there's an abnormality with um, the anatomy of the ear, whether it's the external part of the ear or the ear bones inside of the ear, then some other surgeries may help to treat that type of hearing loss. There are implantable hearing aids called cochlear implants or bone anchored hearing aids. And the cochlear implants are more for a severe uh, sensory neural hearing loss. And below I have a link of an amazing video of a child when they first turn their cochlear implant on after they've had the surgery for having the cochlear implant. And it's their first sounds that they've heard of with their parents. And it's really tear jerking, it's a great, great video. If a child has significant hearing loss, like I had mentioned before, we always worry about a speech delay. So it's important to have a speech therapy assessment and that can help them better progress in their speech. So prevention is key. If you know that your child or your newborn failed a hearing test, you have to follow up for a repeat hearing test just to make sure that it returns back to normal. And 25% of the time, studies have shown it can return back to normal. If they do um, fail a hearing test at school, they need to go to the pediatrician's office and get a referral for an audiogram. And if the audiogram is abnormal, then you likely will be referred to an ENT uh, provider in order to determine and discuss more in detail about what the hearing loss entails. So prevention is key. So the best way to prevent a hearing loss is to avoid loud noise exposure. So if you know you're gonna to go to a loud concert or you go to an air show, make sure you and your children have good ear protection with earplugs. And if a child has chronic fluid in the ears, a lot of times if you control their allergies, whether it's with a nasal steroid spray, then that could help prevent them from developing issues with their ears. 
Another thing is preferential classroom seating. So if you know that your child's not hearing well, talk to their teachers and let them know that they should be sitting in front of the classroom because that'll help them gear their focus more on what they're hearing and be able to pay better attention in the classroom. And there is something called an FM system, which through the school audiologist, you can request this. And this entails the teacher wearing a microphone and the student wearing either an earpiece or a little speaker at their desk and that'll help amplify the sound to get them hearing better and to focus a lot easier. So that's pretty much it for hearing loss. If you have any questions feel free to drop them below. So since it's Favorites Friday I'm going to discuss a couple of my favorite things and my first is one of my favorite books. It's called The Next Right Thing. It's by Emily P. Freeman. Mm -hmm. If you have trouble making decisions because of either chronic hesitation or you've always lived with uh, more recent onset of decision fatigue, Emily P. Freeman offers a fresh way of practicing familiar but often forgotten advice. Simply do the next right thing. She also has a podcast. If you look on uh, under podcast, if you have an iPhone, look for the next right thing. And she is great. She, her voice is really soothing. So you can get this in either like your Kindle version audiobook or a hardcover. And I have been reading this book um, with my journal club, so it's been a really great book. So another one of my favorite things is actually a place that I recently stayed at. It's called Carte, and it's located in downtown San Diego in Little Italy. And it's a brand new hotel that just came out just this week. And I am fortunate to know one of the PAs that I work with. Her husband is one of the designers of the hotel. It has 246 modern guest rooms and it has a rooftop bar overlooking the city and overlooking um, the ocean as well. And it has a beautiful pool and delicious dining experience that we had. If you have one hotel to choose from in San Diego, I would choose this one. It's a pretty amazing experience. So if you have any questions at all, or I could put the link below to if you'd like to make a reservation, if you live in San Diego for a staycation, or if you come coming to visit, this would be a great way for you to spend your weekend. So that's all for now. This is PA and AM signing off. Tune in next Friday to discuss nosebleeds in kids and adults. I hope you have a great day. Take care.